Thank you. Okay. All right, so today we're gonna to be uh, presenting what we're calling the Daylight Earth Tables. So quick overview, uh, maps at Meta. Um, our maps are based on uh, OpenStreetMap uh, data. Um, we start by ingesting OpenStreetMap and then we create uh, the daylight map distribution. Just show of hands, any familiarity with this term daylight, the daylight map distribution? Okay, perfect. I will go into a little bit of details on that. And then from daylight, we create what we call the earth table. Um, and we're, it's what we're gonna talk about more today in depth. And then Jonah's gonna talk about how that goes into our uh, maps um, inside Meta products. So, yep, that's what we're gonna talk about today. We're gonna do an overview uh, and then introduce it. And then I'm gonna give a couple kind of code examples um, at the end here uh, to talk about how to, how to access this data. So, daylight. Daylight is a monthly distribution of OSM that undergoes a series of quality control and vandalism checks to ensure a degree of map quality and integrity. Um, it started as early as kind of 2018, 2019 um, with the then Facebook team presenting uh, at State of the Map, um, this kind of new process that Facebook had implemented for vandalism detection um, and how, to, how they were improving OpenStreetMap. Um, in March of 2020, uh, they announced the first uh, kind of um, beta version of, uh, of Daylight. Um, and now today, two years later, uh, we're looking at release uh, 1.18. So we release on a four week uh, schedule. And this is what the Daylight process looks like. We take OSM each month and we run a series of quality control checks on it. We look at um, names, uh, it has any, you know, have names changed. Um, coastline integrity is really important to us because uh, when you break the coastline and then try to go render that, you find huge chunks of land that end up underwater, um, et cetera. We can't have that. Um, uh, relation integrity, uh, other tools out there such as the Atlas checks, um, OSM CHA. Um, we run all these and identify a uh, number of errors in the, in the map and then we have a kind of a four week sprint where we uh, go back and actually fix all of these uh, errors, uh, not on an internal version of OSM, but we actually fix those in live OSM. So we're not doing anything, this is not a fork of OSM, we're using that term, the distribution term, to consider this something more like a Linux distribution, where we are actually contributing back to OSM and then we're ingesting each of those fixes. So. Um, yeah, so as we, as we go, we're keeping up with OSM. This is far from a, a fork or a, sep, a separate uh, instance of, of OSM. So this is the process. Here's a couple. We have numerous examples of vandalism and stuff that we find in the map. Um, these are some of the more appropriate ones we, can, we feel comfortable showing. Um, so currently, uh, what's in daylight uh, version 118? Uh, about 525 million buildings. Um, 78 million uh, kilometers of roads and paths, and, and it's really 100% uh, OSM data. Um, you can think of daylight as a, if you're familiar with kind of like OSM snapshot, um, you can think of it as, as a snapshot of OSM, but where maybe each feature isn't from the exact same time, because we've kind of cherry picked as we've, fi as we've fixed things and identified them uh, across, the, across the release. Um, and then here's just an example of like fixing a, uh, a repaired beach relation. Um, we see there on the right, once it's been fixed, we actually see a beach. Um, with each release, we do publish kind of a summary, a change log of all the fixes that have been out there, kind of take some of our, our highlights. Um, and then we also publish the, just like a whole CSV of uh, thousands or tens of thousands of things that have actually been fixed. So if people want to go back and, and look at that um, and just kind of see how, how this does differ from like the current version of OSM at any given time, uh, you can kind of see the, the improvements there. So this is all available at daylightmap.org. Um, so where can you find Daylight? Daylightmap.org, direct links to download. The, we release it back in the OSM PBF format. So if you have a, um, you know, a mapping stack that ingests the OSM format and does stuff with it, Daylight is kind of a, just a drop-in replacement if you're looking for uh, a version of, of OSM that kind of has this guarantee of, of quality uh, and vandalism-free. Um, 
And then we're also really excited as of January um, this year, uh, it's also on the registry of open data at AWS and we release it as the PBF format there. And we've also been releasing what we're, the analysis ready kind of cloud optimized uh, parquet files. So we take all of daylight and put that into, um, you know, take away the nodes, ways and relations and say, this is just a feature and here's the actual geometry. And we release that as Parquet files on S3 that you can then load into other uh, environments specifically for like data analysis. Um, so with that, uh, that's kind of the daylight overview. And now we're gonna uh, talk about the next step which is turning that into the earth table. Yeah, so, uh... I'm Jonah. Uh, Earth tables. Um, so, uh, Jennings, you know, explained we're, we've gotten pretty good at dealing with OSM data at Meta. We use it a lot in our internal maps. Uh, and a lot of teams will rely on our map data uh, to do all kinds of research and projects and everything. Um, so, the Earth table kind of spawned from this uh, daylight release. Um, we had a lot of uh, internal use cases uh, where somebody said, like, I just need all the parks in the world, right? Which is, if you mess with OSM data, that, that, that's a pretty complicated thing. Um, the map uh, that we, uh, we have internal maps, we have external maps at Meta. The internal base map is like a cross-functional tool across the entire organization that people use to do uh, all kinds of projects, uh, all kinds of things. Uh, so. Uh, having it, having uh, map data synced up with our base map is really important to validate uh, results and things like that. Uh, we also had like a lot of, you know, just requests of like, uh, I need simple map data. I don't want to understand complexities. Uh, it was a very high barrier of entry. We would see like errors in people's research and data and stuff like that when they didn't consider like different tagging methods and stuff like that. Uh, and then, uh, most importantly, you know, just within the organization, it kind of needed to be in a s single table that somebody could just easily write a SQL query and say, you know, give me all the parks and stuff. Uh, so we, we were getting a lot of these kind of questions, and we wanted to kind of do something about it to help everyone at Meta internally uh, and potentially externally uh, work with OSM data. Uh, so. Um, a lot of uh, how we did things on the cartography side, you know, we build uh, vector tiles at a global scale. Um, and uh, to build vector tiles, it's really a simplified, you want to simplify all the data down as much as you can. Not just like geometry wise, but like uh, all the attributes of the data, you want it really simple so the tiles can perform well and you can easily uh, symbolize things without having to write a lot of complex style logic and everything. Uh, so all of that tag interpretation happened on the cartography team. So we had all these like complex things that said, okay, well, it's a national park in America if it has these 12 combinations in Brazil, if it has these combinations, uh, because uh, OSM, you know, there's not like a, a set way to do everything across the world. There's different communities that tag things certain ways locally and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and luckily we have a team of um, uh, QA people that like look for this kind of stuff and help us determine the best way to show things uh, by looking at our map. So we had done like all this, you know, complex logic to make the map really perform it and, you know, be able to show all kinds of things worldwide. Uh, we build that into map tiles and that gets displayed, uh, you know, to all the different meta products. So basically what we did with Earthtable said, you know, we've spent, you know, three years now building this global base map. What if, what if we just took all this logic that we built and pushed that down to like a table that everyone could just access? Uh, and in fact, a lot of people were accessing like our tiling tables to get the simplified logic already. So it had become kind of the, internal way to get like really easy OSM data. So we just said, let's just push that down. Let's make that the, let's make that the earth table. You know, we can socialize that within the org. Like this is the best way to get stuff uh, and everything. And then we basically just ingest the earth table and apply min zooms and uh, labeling logic and stuff like that in our tiling pipelines. Uh, we don't solve everything in OSM, you know, uh, 
at Oracle Park when somebody um, uh, tags the base path as a highway, like we can't like interpret weird stuff like that. Um, uh, and here's a good example. I think this one's in Australia on the right. This is just like every permutation of uh, athletic thing happening at this uh, school or whatever. Uh, the data is what it is. Like we can simplify the tags based on what we know, but like at the end of the day, if somebody adds some weird tagging and stuff like that, you know, we can try to write some rules, but we don't try to like solve every edge case. Uh, another example is, um, you know, there's so many different like permutations and combinations based on tagging logic. You know, you can have like amenity equals whatever for healthcare, but you can also have healthcare equals whatever for to define like what that actually that hospital property is and stuff. Um, and you can see in our simplified logic, like we have uh, a theme. We have like if this is a land use theme. It's a medical class. It's a hospital. If you wanted all the medical stuff, you could just say, give me class equals medical out of the land use theme. You don't have to work, you don't have to need to know like all these weird uh, tagging combinations. Uh, so this is kind of a breakdown of uh, the feature count by theme on the left. And then we also do a lot of cart cartographic data improvements uh, to this earth table stuff. Um, you know, like Jennings said, we have all this kind of like process global coastline stuff that comes in from Mobia, our daylight team. Uh, we validate like height information, so if somebody puts in like really wonky height information, like we know what the min and max are, so we uh, kind of validate and normalize that. Uh, for like places, like cities and uh, neighborhoods, those are all super simplified down to three classes, uh, but also you can also have like a subclass that gets you like what it actually is. But um, So if you just want all the world cities, you can say class equals urban, you get all the world cities. And we break those down further to like metropolises based on population and other factors and stuff like that too. Uh, we calculate links and areas uh, as an attribute column. So if you have like thresholds you wanna apply there, we add the uh, Bingtao quad key to every feature. We add a lot of like evaluations, uh, like is this feature indoors? Is it intermittent? Is it a bridge? And this is all uh, addition. Uh, for buildings, we calculate what land use they're in, um, uh, which I have a good example of. I'll show you in the next slide. Uh, and we also like know with like 3D building data in OSM, it's really complex. So we like know what the footprint is, we know what the parts are, and we associate those together so you, you don't have to. Um, so with our with our global base map that you see at like. Uh, here's a couple examples, like uh, on Facebook, like check-ins and this uh, crisis response one is a good one. Uh, Mapillary, Instagram, these are like where our maps end up. This all this Earth Table simplified data that's already validated by daylight and then simplified on our end. So 83% of the features on our map come from this Earth Table stuff, and then we have some other stuff that we actually apply this Earth Table schema to. Um, so here's a good example. Uh, we know that all these buildings are on a military base, so we can color the buildings differently, right, without even relying on what the building tagging is, because a lot of the times the tagging's not gonna support that. Uh, and then just some other examples um, of, you know, how we use our map and the map data. We're running on time here, so I'm gonna blast through it. And then uh, we're actually uh, right here, so you can see we have really good 3D data in OSM and our table stuff supports that. Cool. All right, so I <clears throat> hope we've made the case that I think the uh, Earth tables, we think the Earth tables are uh, really useful, a really useful uh, version of, of, of OSM, um, really helpful in lowering, kind of lowering the barrier to entry and not having to understand the whole tagging system. Um, so what we do is, you know, Earth table is really just a classification uh, of OSM data and uh, we apply uh, all of that just directly to our daylight distribution and now make that available um, with, each, with each release. So we put them out on, uh, currently they're out on S3. Um, all the documentation, uh, this is kind of like still evolving, so please check here for the latest instructions on what's available, but daylightmap.org earth. Uh, you can 
see this is a query here to create those tables based on that data. This is part of the, uh, our daylight release with the uh, registry of open data on AWS. So you can just create the tables in your account and, um, and AWS and Meta are covering all those hosting costs as part of the open data program. Um, you just paste it into Athena. Um, if anyone wants to kind of play with this later, come find me um, and this creates your table. And then you can start to just write SQL queries against, uh, against all of OSM kind of classified in this new schema. Um, so here we can just like count the you know, 525 million buildings um, in, this, in this schema. And you can just download them all right there as a CSV um, with the geometries auto resolved, et cetera. Um, here's some examples, perfect. Um, if you check the uh, documentation there, you'll see, you know, we have, this is the land use theme. Um, we have you know, 7.9 million features in OSM that are tagged as agriculture, uh, class, subclass, kind of farmland. Um, so you can see kind of examples, and then there's also all the metadata that's been calculated um, per, uh, per land use as well. Um, so please check that out if you're interested. Um, and then here's a couple just examples of trying to extract some of this data for actual use. So here uh, we're using uh, the quad key as kind of a geographic filter here. It's not actually doing a spatial operation, um, but we're just extracting theme land use, class park, um, and we get you know big CSV, here's your WKT, and I just load that right into QGIS, and um, we're styling here by the, uh, based on the area, and here are all the parks uh, in, in Minneapolis. Um, kind of do the, the same thing now for uh, water. Uh, we have a whole water theme. If you want to know if a point is in the water, uh, you can just query against this theme. Uh, use Colorado as a bounding box here because it's a nice square. Uh, I use that often. Um, and I thought this was particularly interesting because what you're seeing here is kind of like data coverage and data completeness in OpenStreetMap within Colorado. And in the desert southwest there, you see a lot more uh, water uh, being mapped, a lot more rivers being mapped. Um, looking at like, you can also, you know, group by quad key here for analysis, uh, spatial analysis right there in the cloud on AWS uh, with OpenStreetMap data. Um, so here we're just looking at like the sum of the surface area of golf, uh, the golf class uh, from, from land use. Um, I like that kind of Scotland uh, kind of shows up over there. Um, we can do the same thing for you know airports, et cetera. Um, so, these are just kind of examples of what we can do when we you know take that first process, classify OSM data uh, into into something a little bit more user friendly, um, and then you can extract it for uh, any kind of rendering or analysis, um, whatever your use case may be. Um, there's our contact info, um, and uh, you can find the documentation at daylightmap.org/earth. Thank you. Great, thanks for that introduction uh, to the daylight table for those of us who didn't know about it. Um, does anybody get a question? We have a time for one question. Sorry, I missed the first minute of your presentation, so maybe you said that, but I was wondering what actually the Meta's business motivation behind the project is, if you can share that. <laughs> yeah. Um, we're using OpenStreetMap uh, data as a primary uh, data source underneath all our, all our maps. Um, and we want to um, support OpenStreetMap and support the quality of the data. And so the more people we can have using it, the easier we can make OSM data to use and, and implement um, in anything um, we see as a, as a great thing. <laughs> 